Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joshua Daniel and in this video I'm going to show you how to make time lapses with your drone. I'm going to be using a DJI Mavic, however I believe any drone with a photo function can do this, even if you just have to take the photos manually. Right, before we get into this, let's just address the legality of doing so. I do not live in America, however I believe in America it is illegal to fly your drone at night, although some people still try and get away with it. In some countries you are allowed to fly drones at night in various situations, so check your local laws. An example being in New Zealand, you can fly at night if you're in a shielded operation, which means if you are flying within 100 meters of a structure and not above its ceiling. So for example, if you had a giant water tower or a building, you could fly within 100 meters of that. Just don't go above the roof. And realistically, nothing's going to be flying that way, so it should be safe. But check your local laws before you begin. So first, I'm going to fly my drone up to the desired height. I am going to fly up to about 140 meters, which is 10 meters below the legal limit here and I'm going to look for a focal point in the distance. So any building will do. Now in this video I forgot to set my manual focus, but what you want to do, focus, and then switch to manual focus. This is going to lock your focus at that point, because sometimes they're going to choose a different focal point later in the time lapse, which actually happened to me, which is quite annoying, because you have to reshoot or just skip those frames. I'm focused at a train station, so there's going to be a lot of movement, and movement is what really makes a time lapse. Really good. So I'm going to switch this into manual mode. You have to remember that a time lapse takes quite a lot of frames. The video I'm going to be making is going to be 24 frames per second, so that means that every one photo I take, it's going to take 24 of those to make one second. Now, because drones have a limited flight time, we're going to have to try and do this as quickly as possible, so I'm going to set for two seconds, which means that every 50 seconds, I'm going to have one second of footage. So realistically, to get a good time lapse, you need at least 10 seconds, so that's going to be 500 seconds on my drone. Now, in this DJI drone, if I go into time lapse or interval timer, it shows me only 10 seconds. And the reason is because on this model, you cannot shoot RAWs, which I am currently set to shoot in RAW because of course you have the better light. And that would be ideal for this time lapse, but it's not going to write fast enough to my card. So I'm going to have to switch this into JPEG. After switching it into JPEG, I'm going to be able to shoot my intervals at two seconds, which is going to work nicely. For my exposure time, I'm going to select, I think I selected about 1.6 or 1.3 seconds. Ideally, it would be doing a two second exposure and then a two second write speed. However, it seems like the drone has trouble writing as quickly as that. So I'm gonna have to sit a little bit quicker, but I'm still gonna get a nice effect. Because it's a, using a city, you don't need too high of an ISO, and also the ISO on drones isn't the best. Uh, on the Mavic, I wouldn't recommend anything above 400. So I'm gonna set this to about 1.3 or 1.6, ISO 100, interval set at two seconds, and start my time lapse. Now the drone's gonna be up there for about 20 minutes, which is gonna give me quite a lot of photos. I think from this, I got about 480. So just let it run its course, and uh, after that, Make sure you get your drone home safe and you can move into your time lapse. You might notice that I have my downward sensors turned off and I generally catch my drone, so I need to keep them turned off. And especially I do that at night because I'm not sure about what I'm actually landing on. Okay, so now that I've finished taking my photos and I've got my drone home safe and sound, I am going to edit my photos. Now, because we shot in JPEG, you can actually skip doing the editing part because they're already ready to go. I am going to edit my photos in Lightroom just because I want to change a little bit, and I will give you some tips on how to edit your night photos. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to set my temperature down. So I could have done this in camera, but I usually forget to. But I like my night photos to look very blue and cold, and I think that it could be just a personal preference, but I really think that's the best night photos. They have that kind of blue effect instead of the natural orange that I seem to get. I really don't like the orange, but I love the cold blues. It looks very night-like. Now, I'm pretty happy with the other settings, so I'm probably not going to change too much. Or I might have a little bit of a fiddle with them to see if I can get something good, though. But the one tip I will say is that I like to use a graduated filter on the top to make sure that that dark is really just pitch black. I do that for a couple of reasons. Uh, I find that a lot of noise can show up in the, in the shadows, so I want to have a nice clear black, like a really, really dark one. So when we have that done, I'm going to export these photos. And at this point, you can either put these photos into your video renderer, because of course these are photos, you have to make your own time lapse. But first I am going to stabilize my photos. And you don't have to do this, but like I said, it's going to make all the difference. So I'm going to put these photos into Adobe After Effects, although I believe there are stab other stabilizing programs out there. Okay, so now in After Effects, I'm going to go to New Project. I'm going to go to Composition, New Composition. The settings I'm going to be using is 1080p at 24 frames per second. However, you can use what you like. Okay, so now you want to go over to Effect Control, go into Project, where you see you have Composition 1 or Comp 1. I'm going to go to right click and I'm going to go Input File. Okay, so now I'm clicking on the first photo 
Now you'll notice all my photos are numbered because I exported them like that in Lightroom. And you really want your photos to be like this because then After Effects is gonna recognize them better. And you only have to click on the first one and you'll notice that Import JPEG Sequence is selected. Okay, so now that the JPEG sequence is in there, all the photos are there, so I'm gonna drag this into the middle. Now, you're going to have to resize this. Of course, the photos are, let's see, it says 4,000 by 2,000, so it's much larger than 1080p, so we just need to scale that down. And of course, 1080p is not the same aspect ratio as our photos, so there's gonna be a little bit of overlap. You're not gonna have the entire scene, but that's okay. In fact, you probably use less of the entire scene because we're going to stabilize it. So let's just run through without stabilization how it look, looks like. So yeah, it looks pretty good, really cool actually. I love the way the cars walk past, but you can see it looks it bouncing up and down. And the reason is because, of course, we're flying 130 meters or 140 meters into the sky. And of course, it was actually quite windy when I did this. Surprisingly, it still held its position quite well. So what we want to do is stabilize it. So you're going to go into effect. Now I have it already selected because I use it a lot, but if you don't, or if this is the first time using it, you want to go into distort warp stabilizer VFX. All right, so now you have your warp stabilizer. Now it says smooth motion here. So that would be if you had a moving shot, of course, we wanna make this look like it's still. So we're gonna, sw we're gonna switch uh, smooth motion into no motion. Okay, so now you're just gonna have to let your processor run. It, it can take a while. This is the most intensive process. Once it's finished, we're gonna run through and have a look what it looks like. All right, now it's finished and it looks really stable. It looks like it's just completely standing still. It's really nice what you can do with the three axis gimbal like on the Mavic and also using a little bit of stabilization. You can just get that extra quality that's gonna make your time lapse look that much better. All right, so we're finished here. So I am going to export this and I'm going to move this into Premiere, although you could just export it like this or move it into something else, maybe make it into a GIF. That works very well or just upload it or add it to your project for your video. So to export it in After Effects, you want to go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue, or you can add it to a Adobe Premiere project. But after we've added it to our Render Queue, you can see down here it says your Comp1 AVI or whatever your name is. If you want to change the name, you want to click on this and select the folder it's going to go to. But if you're happy with the settings, go to render. And that's it, that's finished now. So let's have a look at some of the other applications we can use this for. Okay, so here's my final product and it looks really good. And also here's another couple of things I tried. So I tried one a little closer to the car level and you get that nice motion blur from the cars. And that's because of course, the long exposure time. And you can try it with longer exposure time if you like. For every extra second you expose it, you have more chance of getting a little bit less clear, but those light streaks are gonna look amazing. So it might, I might go back and try this with like a longer exposure time, maybe even as long as 10 seconds, even though I know I'm not gonna get that many uh, photos out of 20 minutes at 10 seconds. And I also tried something a bit more adventurous using the point of interest to rotate the camera. You can see it's not very clear because we're rotating but that back and forth effect with the cars moving is just really cool anyway i hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe for any future updates i'm going to be making a lot more drone and photography tutorials in the future and i'm going to leave you with a clip of my next tutorial it's going to be a day to night time lapse using a drone and i don't think i've ever seen anyone do this so this might be a first but i had a play with it the other day and it came out really cool so i hope you'll stick around for that until the next one my name's been joshua daniel alice clark alfie design